Lady Jane Grey was a teenager thrust onto the throne. She was the first woman to be proclaimed Queen of England, but few would recognize the name Queen Jane. The first eight heirs to the throne being female, the question wasn't how do we deal with this, it was how do we avoid it? Jane's journey to the throne begins with the sudden illness of the 15-year-old Tudor king, Edward VI, the only son of Henry VIII. If Edward dies childless, his sister Mary will inherit the throne. But she's a woman, and worse, she's a Catholic, an abomination to Edward, who is fiercely Protestant. There may be a lot of gaps in the record, but the king's health was a subject of intense scrutiny. We have every grim detail. He is beginning to break out in ulcers. A procession of the best doctors came and went, but the king was not getting better. Stories of the king's illness were played down, but here at Greenwich, in the corridors of power, there was growing concern. People began to speculate about what the death of the king might mean. That feeling of just terror that the entire world was going to devolve into chaos must have just been enormous for them. The most powerful nobles in the country know that they stand to lose everything in a Catholic regime. The question of how to hold on to power and keep Mary from the throne preoccupies the key players at court. First among them, is the Duke of Northumberland. Northumberland was a soldier, a leader in battle, a politician. In 1553, Northumberland was the power behind the throne. He'd been Henry VIII's Lord Admiral. And now, as head of the Privy Council, he knows that if Edward dies, there's a big problem with the succession. But what would happen if Edward died? He had two sisters, Mary and Elizabeth, but were there other options elsewhere on the family tree? So if we look around this family tree, we see that our options are pretty limited. Eleanor was already dead, but otherwise there's Mary, Mary, Elizabeth, Francis, Jane, Catherine, Mary, and Margaret. Eight women, not a man in sight. It was entirely understood that the heir to the throne should be male, full stop. And when you're left with the first eight heirs to the throne being female, the question wasn't how do we deal with this, it was how do we avoid it? But by 1553, one of the greatest champions of Catholicism was Mary, Henry VIII's eldest child and the heir to Edward's throne. Age 37, Mary was an unrepentant Catholic. Before her brother's illness, she had held regular illegal masses at her home. This act of defiance enraged Edward and hardened his resolve that she should never be queen. Next in line was Henry's 19-year-old daughter, Elizabeth. And although she was Protestant, like Mary, she was technically illegitimate. But as Edward's illness progresses, a secret document is hastily produced in his sick room. What was Edward planning and why? This is Edward's device for the succession. It's in his own handwriting. It's clearly a document written by a teenage boy. The handwriting isn't very sophisticated and neither actually is the language. My device for the succession, it says at the top. And the essence of Edward's plan is clear in the first paragraph where one word gets repeated over and over again. Male, 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 heirs male. Edward wants a Protestant king to rule after his death. There are still questions. It's Edward's handwriting, but we don't know if it was Edward's idea. As leader of the Privy Council, the Duke of Northumberland was Edward's closest advisor. There's a possibility that he had a hand in this document for his own very personal reasons. The Grey family has now become the focus of Edward's plans for the succession. The device names Jane, Catherine and Mary Grey and their mother Frances. 
until one of them produces a son, Francis would be a caretaker and the throne of England would remain empty. So what's the solution to the difficulty of that empty chair? Well, I think their immediate solution is to have a, a round of marriages in the hope that someone will produce a son before Edward dies. Of all the royal descendants, the greatest prize is the eldest of the Grey Sisters, 15-year-old Jane. Aged around 11, she moved to London to live under the wardship of the king's uncle, Thomas Seymour. It was here that she advanced her education with the best Protestant tutors the country had to offer. She's really, in some ways, being seen as the future of the Protestant Reformation in England. Jane's education was facilitated by her father, Henry Gray, who was a senior nobleman and a member of the Privy Council. He was close to Northumberland, and together they agreed a plan for the marriage of Jane to Northumberland's son, Guildford, who was also about 15 years old. For Northumberland, Jane was his route to the power of the crown through his son. He arranged their wedding at one of his lavish London residences. Whether or not there was violence, Jane was certainly put under pressure to be married, and with good reason. The king's health was failing. As the weeks tick past and Jane embarks on married life, Edward shows no sign of recovery. The realization dawns that there's no prospect of any male heirs being born in time. We don't know the date or the precise details, but sometime in the weeks before his death, a final and critical change is made to the device. It's a change that will have a devastating impact on the life of Lady Jane Grey. Two small words have been added in Edward's own handwriting. Two words that would change the course of England's history. And her. Before, it said, the Lady Jane's heirs male. Now, after this change, it says, the Lady Jane and her heirs male. They were suddenly faced with the fact that a woman simply was going to have to inherit the throne, whether any of them liked it or not. And the only woman available for that at that moment was Jane Grey. So this decision to make Jane queen was absolutely transformational. It was about to propel her from being a minor member of the royal family to the English throne, and she knew nothing about it. Northumberland knows that once Edward's sister Mary discovers that she's been cut out of the succession, it could start a civil war. So he bides his time and gathers a tight-knit group of councillors around him. Mary, Jane's rival for the throne, had been growing increasingly suspicious that all was not well at court. Just a few days before Edward's death, Northumberland had tried to lure her to London. She gets a tip off from someone at court, a warning that Edward is dying and the, the summons to court that she's received shouldn't be uh, followed, that she shouldn't go back to court, she shouldn't respond to it because there is a plan to capture her when she comes to court on the pretense of coming to see her dying brother. Mary goes into hiding. On the 6th of July, at about 8 p.m., the 15-year-old king says he feels faint. <coughs> A few minutes later, he dies. For Northumberland, the game is on. He needs to consolidate his position and place Jane, now his daughter-in-law, on the throne before Mary finds out. By the 9th of July, Edward has been dead for three days. Northumberland is ready for phase two of his plan. It's time for the Privy Council to seize the moment and their new queen, Jane Grey. Early on the 9th, Northumberland sends for Jane, but she has no idea why. She was completely in the dark about why she'd been summoned and could never have imagined what lay in store. 
she is told that now she is going to be queen. And the French ambassador reports what she said. This is not for me. The rightful heir is Mary. Bolstered by her faith, Jane accepts the crown that afternoon. The die is cast. That evening, Northumberland throws an opulent banquet. For Jane, the 9th of July marks the day she prepares to become the first Queen of England. Thank you.